Praise the living Jesus Christ. My name is Witness Ken Paul Obi Eke. I'm bringing you the heartbeat of God once more. We are going to deal with the business of the church. The church of Jesus Christ has only one business, and that business is souls. All the jamboree, all the uh, uh, whatever we are doing without recognizing that the church has not two businesses but one, and that is the business of souls. If any church missed to understand this, if any minister missed to understand this, the person has missed it completely. I want us to quickly um, uh, look at the book of John chapter number 4. The book of John chapter number 4, the Bible says in verse 31, in the meanwhile his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Ironically today, our churches are busy chasing shadows, competition everywhere. Who will build the biggest prisoner, prison for prisoners that they call members? Who will buy this and who will buy the other one? And the business of the church, the only business of the church, is being undermined. And I want to call our attention to this because the God of judgment will require an account on this from the church, from the pastors, from every believer. It is not one man business. It's the business and the only business of the church. And so the word of God says, Jesus said, he has only one meat that they don't know of. And I want to share this meat, this meat, this thing that is as meat, as important to Jesus Christ and to God. He says, therefore said the disciples one to another, has any man brought him out to eat? The disciples went to town to go and buy food for Jesus to eat. For them to eat. But that was not the meat Jesus was you know, interested in. Just as some of us today are chasing different type of things in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of running church. And it is good and very important we repent. We understand that the church has only one business and is sole business. And so uh, Jesus said... Uh, in verse um, 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him who sent me. Now, what is his will? Souls. To win souls. To catch souls. And uh, we have gotten so careless that even right inside the church, souls are being lost. The churches need to be re-evangelized. And so it's making the end time harvest more tedious. Rather than going to the streets, going to the byway, byways and, and uh, uh, highways to save the unsaved, the church itself needs to be re-evangelized. One of the reasons is because the church is not evangelizing. Because the church has lost the meat, the only meat that the Lord has. And so the word of God says, um, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Verse 35, Say not ye that are yet four months and then commit harvest. Please, the harvest is now. It's now or never. The soul you fail to save today dies tomorrow, goes to hell forevermore. There must be urgency in our evangelism, personal evangelism, family evangelism, evangelism in the office. There has to be urgency. 
Look at the way the devil is walking. Everywhere he's advertising. Go to the roads. You see women naked. Show back, show front. You see all manner of things happening. Every day they are coming up. Look at the one they called uh, Big Brother Niger. What is big about, about gathering you know, useless people, hopeless people to come and be celebrating nudity and uh, destroying the youths? What is big about it? What is big about Big uh, Brother Niger? What, is there any brotherhood in it that... Even people that are supposed to stand against this thing are not standing against it. Our governments are keeping more. And this devil is evangelizing right into the rooms and everywhere. But the churches, the Christians, we are just there like as if we are not there. I was asking somebody with what is happening in the world, with what is happening to Nigeria, Will it be a good account to you that Christianity ends at your time? If the enemies want to do, uh, bring Christianity to an end, is it good that it's in your own time that it will happen? Many of us don't care for winning souls. To us, Christianity is designed for our pleasure. But Jesus Christ is ready to forfeit food to save one soul. Our shepherd, our captain is the one that leaves 99 to look for one. Now, the word of the Lord says, why I'm bringing this to you is because everyone will give account. Every soul saved will give account. Now, the word of the Lord says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then commit harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. God wants you to see the need. He wants me to see the need. He wants us to see the need to evangelize now. That uh, drug addict, that prostitute, is not just transferring lukewarm members from one church to one church. That is not evangelism. You are only stealing people's sheep. The, 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 the people that need Jesus Christ, I've never heard of him, they're everywhere. And you are looking for somebody's members to carry. And that is to you evangelism. Tomorrow you come out and say you are built, uh, the, your auditorium is bigger than the world, and things like that. You need deliverance. You need to be told the truth. And you need to understand that Jesus Christ is not happy with the way we are going about soul saving. Some big churches, you go there, you might likely not find up to 20 people that are truly saved. It is time for us to understand what made Jesus leave everything he was doing for God food to sit down to save one wayward woman. Religious people will not count her as anything. But Jesus Christ does not judge, does not condemn the way we do. Now, the word of the Lord went on and says, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Your family is white to harvest. Don't say you are tired, you have spoken to them, they did not hear. Keep interceding, keep praying. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. Keep interceding, keep talking. Keep bringing the gospel, not empty gossip to them. Let them know more about Jesus. Bring Jesus to them, not religion. Nobody will reject Jesus if you present Jesus in the right way. Jesus is love. When we, when we show love to people as we bring Jesus, they will accept Jesus. There's nobody who doesn't want love. And so the Bible says, And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit unto life eternal. Now watch this. It says that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. All of us 
as we go out to speak, share tracts, as we intercede, as we give money, give time to see so saved, the Lord is saying that we will rejoice together. Somebody was asking me the other time, what of if somebody has spoken to, 10 people have spoken to one person, who now will that go to his credit? Every one person that truly ministered Christ to that person has a share, has a star from that person on his or her crown. And that is why in evangelism, we need to do it with joy, with unity of faith. Never look at anybody or look at any people and look at any area and say, this place cannot be harvested. No, the Lord said they are ripe and you need to walk with the word of God. Not what you feel, not what you see. Intercession goes with evangelism because you can't spoil a strong man's house except you first disorganize the house. I want to reveal this secret to you. Many people you least expect will be in hellfire because they did not evangelize. Jesus told me, if you don't evangelize, you scandalize. When you are not evangelizing, what it means is that you don't believe in Jesus. Apart from that, you are disobeying him. He said, go ye and make disciples of all nations. Jesus Christ said, come unto me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Features of men. That's the first thing Jesus makes you. And that is what matters most to heaven. But today, we go to church for God to meet just our needs. We don't care to meet his need. And that is not Christianity. The early disciples didn't do it like that. The spirit of God is propelling me to wake you up. Because on that day, if you sleep today and don't wake, if you take your last breath, you will give account of souls. May your hand not be filled with blood. May you wake up today to hear what the master is saying. Now the Lord said, and herein is that saying true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that we are on, you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you have entered into their labors. Listen and listen carefully. When you know the way, most of the apostles, except John, were killed, were martyred. You will ask yourself whether what we are practicing today is Christianity. If you know how the believers of those days who were in search of souls were thrown to hungry lions to be eaten, you will ask yourself, on that day, when we come to heaven, are we going to sit together with these people who use their blood to evangelize? But all we go to church to do is give me this, give me that. And when you wait for one month, it's not given to you. You change to another commercial center. And if they waste your time there, you move to the other. And that is the understanding of the modern day Christianity. It's happening there. It's happening here. One prophet is prophesying and prophet lying. There is miracle. There is this. That's all. And the Lord is watching. And the Lord is saying, Return today. Return today to the Great Commission. So is the only business the church has. Jesus Christ went to the cross for souls. He shed his blood for souls. All the rest are additions. Souls is why Jesus Christ came. And we need to come back to that. And I said something, and I want it to drive well into you, that any Christian that is not evangelizing is not a Christian. Jesus said, if you are not with me, you are against me. Any Christian that is not evangelizing, any Christian 
that has no passion for souls, I want to tell you, has no chance of making heaven. If Jesus Christ said go and you refuse to go, will he call you faithful? Where will he count you into? Some of us are so ashamed to tell people about their Jesus. But the hidden, the unbelievers, the worldly, are not ashamed to tell you of the nonsense that they do in the world. I am calling us, I am waking us up. The Lord is saying, get back to your first love. Rise up and win souls for the Lord. Evangelism, a uh, 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 money cry, everything that people have been dropped now, go back again in that office, in your family. If we please the Lord, it will cause even our enemies to love us, to be at peace with us. Let us think about how to give Jesus this meat he's talking about. His meat is to see that soul you are rejecting saved. That soul you refuse to tell about Jesus saved. We are, the church is not where to come and dance. The church is filling station where you are filled to go out and win others. You are to go out and produce your kind. Why you are not producing your kind is that your salvation is starvation. Your salvation is suspect. There is nobody that is truly saved who Jesus is living in. This same Jesus that said his meat <laughs> is to see so saved. There is nobody that is truly saved and this Jesus is living in you that that same passion will not be in that person. I am praying for all of us. Let the fire of evangelism Come alive again. Let the churches that are transferring lukewarm Christians from one place to the other go to those prostitutes. Use those money that has been wasted. Go to the people who have not heard of Jesus. To go to those drug addicts. Go to those people that need your help. Let them know Jesus. Let Jesus Christ the Son of God, come into their lives and help them to be saved once more. I am calling upon our pastors, my beloved brothers and sisters who are heading ministries. We need to return back to evangelism. I'm not talking about church growth. I'm talking about saving souls for Jesus Christ. He is coming very soon. He will be here any moment from now. Jesus came to me weeping some time ago. He said, I'm coming soon. But the church is not ready. The church is doing nothing. I am asking you as a child of God, who is going to give your own account? What will you tell Jesus when he comes? Jesus said something in the word of God. And I want us to understand it very well. When the son of man come, will he find faith on earth? Showing you that what we are doing in most churches today, we have lost the faith. I'm not exonerating myself. I'm not trying to let you think that I'm better than anybody. And I'm not calling anybody to competition or comparison. I'm speaking as a voice of this end time to wake us up now for evangelism and to cry out to God for the power. The Bible said, with great grace and power, the disciples witnessed Christ. He said, they witnessed him with great power and great grace was upon them. When we are ready to go, the grace of God, the power of God will go with us. When we are willing to do that which the Lord 
has mandated, commanded to depopulate hell and populate heaven. The power, the glory, the Lord himself will go with us. Those of you missionaries, those of you in the field of evangelism, don't be tired, don't be discouraged. Man might not recognize you, but the Lord sees what you are doing. Don't give up. The Lord is counting on all of us. I want us to remember that if Jesus said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Meaning that one soul is more important to God than everything on earth. We should count souls more important than all these vain glories we are celebrating. May the Lord give us understanding. May the God Almighty grant us the spirit of humility, the spirit of repentance, that we will be able to hear the voice of the Lord right now, saying, go ye, not sit ye. The church has sat for too long and have gotten so far that I cannot run and cannot win the race. We want to wake up. We are crying now for revival, that the Lord will revive us again, that the Lord will bring us back to the days of the Acts of Apostles. That is revival. Revival is when something is brought to the original form. The original form is the church of the Acts of the Apostles. The people whose soul mean breakthrough, mean everything to, because that is the only thing that brings joy to heaven. And they operate as citizens of heaven. Jesus Christ said to them, do not rejoice that the demons are subject to you, but rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. I want you to know that to see names written in heaven, written in the book of life, gives our Father joy. The Bible says there is joy for one soul that is saved. There is joy in heaven for one soul that is saved. Can you call party for heaven today by saying, Lord, I will go. Give me grace. Give me enablement. I will go. Lord, I will start from where I am. Evangelism is not only when you go here or go there alone. That's very wonderful and very important. But you can start anywhere you are. That next person with you, if he dies today, will he or she make heaven? I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about membership. I want you to ponder over this. And may the Holy Spirit, the great counselor, bring conviction in our hearts and release us from this lukewarmness, this laziness towards saving of souls, towards evangelism. God bless you for hearing and God bless you more for obeying. I want to say, if you are not yet born again, Jesus is coming. It can be now. It can be any moment. Give your life to him. That's the only way there is safety. Ask him to come into your heart and live for you. Be your Lord and Savior. Forgive your sins. Wash you with his blood. Be everything to you. And he will do right that. Father, I thank you. And I pray for everyone that have listened that you will grant them, O oh God, grace, that they will not be hearers only deceiving themselves, but doers of your word. Bless everyone. Touch those who are sick. Whatever, O oh God, is their need, I ask that you supply. Father, we are waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, that when he will come, anytime, will, will be ready. God bless you, every one of you, and see you again. My name is Witness Ken Paul. Thank you.